Wondering why you aren't losing weight? A study by researchers from the Mayo Clinic shows certain types of bacteria in our gut may influence weight loss and weight gain. The study found that those who were successful in losing weight had an abundance of bacteria called Phascolarctobacterium in their gut, while those who were not had an abundance of bacteria called Dialister. Gut bacteria breaks down food parts we can't normally digest. When this occurs, the bacteria creates extra calories for our body to digest, which results in a calorie boost. The participants were tracked for three months, during which they had to follow a low-calorie diet and were encouraged to walk 10,000 steps a day. A researcher involved in the study told NPR that people who lost at least 5% of their body weight had a different gut bacteria compared to those who did not lose 5% of their body weight. The bacteria of Phascolarctobacterium had previously been associated with weight gain in a study involving obese rats. The male researcher said their study suggests Phascolarctobacterium may increase the effects of lifestyle and dietary changes on weight loss. However, scientists also noted that there might be different types of bacteria that may influence dieting as well. More stories related to bacteria. Gyms are covered in bacteria more filthy than your toilet. Researchers at FitRated, a fitness equipment review company, released results of a study it conducted at three different gyms examining germs left on machines. Sampling 27 pieces of equipment such as treadmills, exercise bikes, and free weights, the researchers were looking for four different kinds of bacteria, some known for their resistance to antibiotics or for causing pneumonia, skin infections, and respiratory illnesses. From examining the exercise bicycles, the researchers found 39 times the amount of bacteria you might find on a plastic reusable cafeteria tray. From examining the treadmills, the researchers discovered more than 74 times the amount of bacteria you would normally find on a water faucet. And from taking a closer look at free weights, the researchers found more than 362 times the amount of bacteria you'd expect to find on the average toilet seat. Each piece of equipment sampled was covered in more than 1 million square inches of germs, and more than 70% of the bacteria found was proven to be harmful to humans. So maybe next time you hit the gym, remember to use workout gloves and soap, because as we now know, most gym rats are dirtbags. No offense. Botulism outbreak strikes Northern California. A mother of three is lying paralyzed in hospital with her life in the balance after eating contaminated nacho cheese sauce. 33-year-old Lavinia Kelly is one of five confirmed cases of botulism linked to patients who ate at the Valley Oak Food and Fuel Gas Station in Sacramento. Foodborne botulism usually occurs in foods that are improperly stored or prepared. Botulism spores exist in the environment. In the absence of oxygen, the spores grow into bacteria that excrete toxins. According to the World Health Organization, botulium toxins are one of the most lethal substances known. Symptoms usually occur within 12 to 36 hours after exposure, with fatigue, weakness, and vertigo often followed by blurred vision and difficulty speaking. The toxins affect the nervous system and cause paralysis. Vomiting or diarrhea are common, and the disease can cause weakness in the muscles. Lavinia Kelly was driving home on April 21st when she pulled over to the gas station, bought a bag of Doritos, and poured nacho cheese sauce over the chips. The next day, Kelly was admitted to intensive care, where she remains more than four weeks later. Officials in Sacramento said there were four more potential cases linked to the nacho cheese sauce, which would bring the total to nine. On Tuesday, Kelly's family filed a lawsuit against the gas station for negligence. Not because he was attacked by crabs, a New Jersey man who went crabbing last week in a river has been infected with flesh-eating bacteria and is now on the verge of losing all his limbs. 60-year-old Millville resident Angel Perez was in the Maurice River fishing for some crab before sunrise one day. But the day after he headed home with a fresh haul of crabs, his right leg became swollen, then turned red and broke out in blisters. A few hours later, all of his limbs turned raw and red. He continued to break out in blisters with marks all over his body. Perez's family said he had developed Vibrio necrotizing fasciitis, a flesh-eating bacteria that can be contracted in salty water, especially during the summertime. According to Perez's family, the infection has already spread from his feet all the way up above his kneecap, and his forearms are black in color, his limbs are covered in blisters, cuts, and sores. Perez is currently in ICU, and doctors are waiting to see if he responds to antibiotics before they consider amputating at least three limbs, or potentially all of them.
The family also mentioned that another family member had recently gone into the same river and now has a rash and swelling on her right leg. And a friend of Perez, who also goes fishing there, is now suffering from a baseball-sized swelling in his elbow. New Jersey's advanced media says that the chance of getting the disease is rare, but the bacteria in the water can enter through a scratch or a scar. Local and state health officials told the media that they're aware of Perez's situation, but are not aware of any potential dangers from the waters. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection said the flesh-eating bacteria that Perez had been contracted with is not common in the waters, while Cumberland County Health Department said the bacteria exists regularly in the waters, especially when the water is warm. Millions of bacteria-infected mosquitoes to be released in Fresno. The life sciences arm of Google's parent company Alphabet plans to release 20 million bacteria-infected mosquitoes in Fresno, California, in hopes this will wipe out the mosquito population that could potentially be carrying the Zika virus. The company uses larval-rearing robots to raise Aedes aegypti mosquitoes with the naturally occurring Wolbachia bacteria. The mosquitoes are then separated into females and males to ensure only the males are released. When the infected males mate with female mosquitoes, any eggs produced will not be able to hatch, thus eliminating the wild Aedes aegypti mosquito population. About 1 million infected male mosquitoes will be released in Fresno over a 20-week period. The mosquitoes will be released by specially designed vans in two 300-acre neighborhoods. Other technology companies in the U.S., including Microsoft, are also developing automated and robotic ways to improve the way we can combat mosquitoes. The Black Death is back. Two counties in Arizona reported fleas in the area that have tested positive for plague, otherwise known as the Black Death, a disease that killed millions of people in Europe in the Middle Ages. Navajo County and Coconino County in Arizona have issued warnings about fleas testing positive for the plague bacteria Yersinia pestis. Fleas carrying the bacteria bite and infect rabbits and rodents. Household pets can also pick up the fleas. The bacteria can be transmitted to humans who handle the sick animals or directly through flea bites. The most common form of plague is the bubonic plague, which is when the bacteria enters the lymphatic system and cause infection in lymph nodes. The person can then become septicemic or pneumonic when the bacteria spread to the lungs. A person with pneumonic plague can transmit the disease to other humans via droplets in the air. Untreated plague can cause serious illness or death. Modern antibiotics are very effective in treating the disease, but only if you are treated in time. Contamination fears spark ego waffle recall. Kellogg recalled 10,000 cases of Ego Nutri-Grain whole wheat waffles in 25 U.S. states on Monday due to potential risks of listeria contamination. Listeria monocytogenes bacteria is commonly found in soil and water. Vegetables can be contaminated with the bacteria from soil, while animals can carry it without appearing ill and can infect meat and dairy products. Once inside food, the bacteria can spread to processing facilities, where it can survive for years, multiplying and contaminating other products. The bacteria can even survive being frozen and can spread to the freezer where the contaminated food is stored. When a person eats food containing Listeria monocytogenes, the bacteria can spread in the body and cause an infection, with symptoms including fever and muscle aches. CRF Frozen Foods announced a nationwide recall of almost 360 frozen fruits and vegetables after a listeria outbreak in May. Meanwhile, ice cream brand Bluebell recalled its products everywhere after a large listeria outbreak last year. 